Hi, this is Edward Awad. This is video three in a series of four videos on photosynthesis. In the previous videos, we looked at the light dependent reactions. In this video, we will focus on the light independent reactions. We have seen in the previous videos that ATP and NADPH are produced in the light dependent reactions that occur in the thylakoid membranes of chloroplasts. ATP and NADPH are produced in the stroma of chloroplasts and are used as a source of energy to power the synthesis of carbohydrates by the light independent reactions that occur in the stroma as well. The light independent reactions are also known as the Calvin cycle. Notice here that the cycle does not use sunlight directly, but it requires the ATP and NADPH produced in the light reactions. Therefore, the Calvin reactions require light indirectly and take place only in the presence of light. The Calvin cycle can be divided into three processes. The first one is carbon fixation, the second is carbon reduction, and the third one is the regeneration of the carbon dioxide acceptor known as ribulose bisphosphate, or RUBP. Let's look at the first process, which is carbon fixation. In this process, carbon is fixed by combining carbon dioxide with a five carbon compound known as ribulose bisphosphate. This initial fixation reaction results in the formation of a six carbon intermediate compound that is unstable. It splits into two molecules of 3-phosphoglycerate, or 3PG. This is an important reaction as it fixes atmospheric CO2 in land plants and dissolved CO2 in aquatic plants, thus removing it from the environment and fixing it in organic molecules. This carbon fixation is catalyzed by an enzyme known as ribulose bisphosphate carboxylase slash, slash oxygenase, or short for Rubisco. This enzyme is believed to be the most abundant protein in living organisms. The overall reaction of carbon fixation is therefore ribulose bisphosphate plus carbon dioxide gives two molecules of 3PG. In the second process of the Calvin cycle, 3PG is reduced and the atoms rearranged to give glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate or G3P. This process uses ATP and NADPH produced by the light-dependent reactions of photosynthesis. The overall, reaction, the overall reaction of carbon reduction is 3PG plus ATP plus NADPH gives G3P. You may notice here that G3P is the same metabolite produced by the end of the energy investing stage of glycolysis. In the third process of the Calvin cycle, ribulose bisphosphate is regenerated from G3P. Ribulose bisphosphate serves here as the carbon dioxide acceptor. This process of ribulose bisphosphate regeneration is powered by ATP and the overall reaction is shown here. The ultimate role of the Kelvin cycle is to produce carbohydrates, and the way they are produced is complex. What ultimately happens is that for a molecule of glucose to form, the Kelvin cycle needs to run six times, thus fixing six molecules of carbon dioxide. This will result in the formation of 12 molecules of glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate, or G3P, of which two will be channeled to a pathway where they are combined to form 6-carbon sugar glucose. The remaining 10 G3P molecules are used to regenerate ribulose bisphosphate. The overall photosynthetic reaction therefore becomes this. Plants synthesize all their molecules from three simple starting materials, carbon dioxide, water, and ammonium. Intermediate metabolites of the Calvin cycle are used as starting points for other pathways, with some of which link photosynthesis to aerobic respiration. For example, 3PG and G3P in the Calvin cycle are used to build fats, and when fats are oxidized, they produce acetyl-CoA, which feeds into the citric acid cycle. Another example is ribulose monophosphate, which is used to produce nucleic acids. It is important here to appreciate the role of chloroplasts and mitochondria in the processing of energy that living organisms obtain from their environment. 
Energy, energy flows from sunlight to reduced carbon or carbohydrates in photosynthesis, and then from carbohydrates to ATP in aerobic respiration. Energy can also be stored in micromolecules such as polysaccharides, lipids, and proteins. Plants produce energy-rich compounds during the day using light energy, and at night, or when the light energy is not sufficient, plants rely on aerobic respiration through their mitochondria.